Uh, we are moving to the rise of uh, DevXOF from Arun Narayan Swami. He is the Senior Director of Engineering at Amadis. And I'll, I'll not, uh, you know, I know we are running late. I'll not take up a lot of time and hand it over to him from you. Thank you. Can you hear me? Okay. So hello everyone. Uh, it's tough to keep the energy level of the previous talk. So, uh, and this is a little more generic top, uh, topic. So let me give it my best. And especially considering you've had your lunch, um, it's a little higher bar which has been set for me to keep you awake, right? So, so I, it's a, as I said, uh, this is a sort of a generic topic which I'm looking at. Uh, giving you a high level view of where we are from a DevOps uh, journey and what's really caused that journey to be successful, right? So that's, that's sort of the touch point that I had. Firstly, thanks, thanks to Unicom who have uh, brought me here and to have got all of you in. Uh, it's my first physical conference after a long time. Uh, it was pre pandemic that I was attending one and now speaking at one more in person, so which is great. Uh, so good to have the uh, pandemic behind us. Uh, hopefully it doesn't come back and uh, we continue to have these interesting ones. So again, uh, just to quickly introduce myself, I'm Arun. Uh, I'm, I had a senior director engineering role, but I've taken up a new initiative now within the organization, stepping away from DevOps a little, uh, doing more of a program management, but also leading up a site. So we're setting up a new development center for our company and I'm heading up that site. So it's, it's completely different, but my journey has been the last 20 years has been in different parts of engineering, DevOps, cloud transformation, agile transformation, etc. So I will not take much time, but it's, it's nice. It's important for me to tell because when we do transformations, I want to give a scale of what our organization does, uh, so that you get to view, get to understand that if this has been done in such kind of organizations, it's easier to replicate in different or a smaller or maybe even larger setups. Uh, as I said, we are in the top 10 software companies in the world. Uh, we are basically a end to end technology company. Uh, we do about close to 2 billion, uh, bookings. Uh, so if you have ever sat on a flight, you would have used our services. Uh, it's, it's powering the travel backend, uh, for, for any journeys, be it flight, uh, trains, uh, hosp hotels and leisure, right? So any of those is sort of serviced by us. Uh, Giving a scale again, uh, as I said, we have very close to 10,000 developers. So when I say it's largely um, services companies which have that scale of developers, uh, even large companies, uh, if you look at even Fortune 10 companies, there are very few who have that scale of developers. So which means any kind of transformation or any kind of changes, it's quite complex for us. So let, let me not get any further into these because this is more about the company. Let's, let's start with something, a, a mini quiz to just make you, um, get you awakened from, from your lunch. So what do you think, uh, that can be sold, but cannot be bought? Let's, let's think about it from a point of view of what conference we are in. Sales skills. Okay. Any, anyone else, any one more take confidence. Okay. Very generic words, but yeah, I, there are many in that category, but okay. In the context DevOps, right? A lot of people sell DevOps saying, this is how it needs to be done. This is, this is a tool you implement Jenkins, your DevOps organization. If you implement cloud, your DevOps organization, but you can't, right? So you can never buy it and say, okay, I've bought it. And this is what happens. It's a massive transformational change uh, that you need to do to be able to get to the DevOps ways of working, right? So uh, even from a point of view, um, many of you might contradict. I would even believe saying somebody saying I'm a DevOps engineer. I, I would question saying it's, it's a, it's a concept. You can't be a conceptual engineer, right? So it's, uh, it's something that you need to implement uh, and follow. So that, that bit aside, Let's the DevOps has been a journey of convergence, right? So let's take a 
very different example. So uh, it's sort of an extended quiz, but let me talk about it. Uh, if you look at the timeline, the timeline plays a big role here. 2006 is when Google Maps starts. Uh, it obviously changes the way anyone uh, sits, drives, um, goes to different locations. 2006 is uh, when sort of the cloud journey begins for uh, AWS, uh, which is sort of I, the first big player to be doing it. 2007, mobile iPhone starts, uh, which is sort of the journey of uh, handheld touchscreen devices. And 2008 was a big leap in terms of changing from um, were changing from edge, uh, not the edge computing of today, but edge based networks to uh, 3G, right? So big changes, everything followed one after the other. And what do you think came after this? Think about a company which could have originated out of these things. And that company couldn't have existed if these had not happened before. Great. So Uber is the one, I mean, in fact, in their first presentation, they had sort of a logo like this. It's a combination of car. It has a map at the back. It has a phone in the front. It was using all these, all these technologies together and building it to say, this is how it works. Any of those primary components, which we've talked about in the past, if it did not exist, Uber, I don't know, may have not existed or it would have existed in a very different form, right? I mean, think about, uh, somebody sitting at the call center, taking down notes, saying, I would have to send this car. They can't compute. They can't compute uh, what kind of uh, route that the person has to take, which car needs to be sent, and all of those, right? All of them converged into something similar, right? So even in this phase of DevOps, I would sort of equate it to something similar, right? So what is DevOps? So when we say this is a very, very simple term, what we use saying, oh, convergence of different things, but in a similar fashion, if you look at it, it's a combination or convergence of different things that we have done, right? Uh, agile and collaboration. So if I look at it, uh, it's too small for you to read, but I'll give you a similar timeline, right? So GitHub started 2009, WhatsApp 2009, Slack 2009, uh, HipChat 2010, and the first safe, which is scaled agile was 2011. DevOps started 2011. Right. Uh, if you look at it from a scaling again, AWS started a little earlier, but GCP as you are very close to 2010 uh, automation in terms of chef uh, 2008 and Sybil 2011. Right. Uh, and demand from time to market. Why that's very, very important is uh, DevOps is meeting some needs. Right. If you had introduced DevOps to 1980s, probably it not, would not have been successful. It was because there was demand. There was demand from a point of view of how do you release, how do you release often. Um, this was the era of Amazon sort of uh, going hyperscale. Walmart started at groceries in 2010. Um, we had Netflix streaming starting in 2010. So all of these started creating demands which said, I need to release faster than somebody else, right? Or I need to be bug free. I need to be a little more stable. Uh, the number of consumers uh, started increasing dramatically, right? So all these conversions led to something which we now call as DevOps, right? Um, again, this is a new, my own interpretation of it, but it's not something which somebody created, let's do DevOps. And then all these things came together. It was in fact, the other way around a convergence of significant amount of uh, transformations, significant amount of num number of companies. I mean, all these companies exist today. All these companies are still known for their technology powers. It's primarily because they adopted all these convergence of technologies together, right? So, and if you look at all the points that I said, agile collaboration, scaling, automation, uh, time to market, all of them are outcomes of DevOps. Right. So if you say, what are the benefits of DevOps? You would put these things of saying, okay, they have to collaborate better. They are, they are able to scale their applications better. They're able to automate or they have automated. That's why they are in the phase of DevOps. And obviously they're able to meet, uh, drive value more, uh, even more what some of their competitors could. So, uh, as I said, that convergence in the action is what DevOps is, right? But let's take simple examples. I said, this is DevXOps. So what, how do we get there? So 
very simple terms i know this i'm talking about this 10 years later or 10 years back this devops talk would have been fabulous but what is it i would still say uh, i've seen various reports state of devops report from chef uh, sorry puppet uh, there are still majority of companies working in legacy ways they they have their own terminologies they have their own reincarnation of devops um and they really do not do what what the rule book says which is which is fine right so uh why why devops originator or why the concept of devsecops exists right so there are different units or different business leaders who have who look at the organization for various different aspects right increasing cost uh, sorry increasing revenue is or reducing cost is the key objective of a business be it any business that you saw is like either increase your top line or increase your bottom line or a combination of it depends on what you want to do uh more functionality to the market product is talking to various users and saying i need to churn out 100 different functionalities even if even if we all know 90% of the functionalities never get used product will keep pushing saying i want all these functionalities to be in production right security uh somebody some auditor is uh breathing down their neck and they would say uh you need to be all compliant you need to have all security measures they are looking at every product from a security view point similarly quality delivery and operations right so this is how most of the organizations even today exist you could call there could be an overlap but uh, that's how they are but what's the first origin of devops right so you sort of merge dev and ops together um not from a team standpoint but from a vision standpoint right so vision of ops is to keep product stable vision of dev is to churn out as much as code as possible right so combining those you put them together these are early dev early devops adopters right so that's typically how it's been moving further would have would sort of bring other components together so you're bringing in uh, ops uh, you which which sort of already started you're bringing in qa um, you're bringing in security all together again is it is it the teams or is it the vision the teams could still be different teams could still be reporting to different lines are they working collaboratively together are they creating um ideas together are they, are they taking ideas to production together right so all of that sort of contributes to the devops journey or the devsecops journey which we have sort of put it so we talked about devops which is sort of uh vision alignment with dev and ops obviously devsecops is bringing in the vision of security together very simple there are similar such concept which are there but in these what is very important is co-owning the end to end chain right so are you able to bring qa at the beginning of the cycle right is is qa the end or qa the beginning of any development cycle which is which is known in different forms saying test driven development or uh, bp is business driven development all of those right so this is quite key from a point of view of how devops has evolved and um, what, what why are we bringing in new areas right uh, so most i would say most organizations are here they have they have evolved quite a bit uh, they have been able to uh, mature their organizations from a bit of saying work in independent silo teams to a converged team of bringing all these technologies together and creating a vision together saying my kpi is idea to production how much faster can i do it and when an idea goes to production what it really means it's stable it's resilient it is usable by users and it drives value all of it together right and it's secure it's it's uh, it's compliant right so it's not like five different teams are looking at five different objectives bringing all of them together into one kind of a vision is where the next phase of devops went right so even further uh, obviously this is something few more companies evolved to where you created small set of agile teams which i wouldn't say agile teams an end to end uh, engineering team which is comprising all these components together right so it's very hard to read uh, from the far but i would say let's say the product dev qa ops all of them combined into one potential scrum team uh, delivering an end to end component um, people transformed this from a point of view of saying oh this is microservices based this is like small components which plug in together etc right so could be uh, 
uh, could be one such interpretation, but the bit is they were all working together in an independent component. There could be some things which are overlapping across, but this is what most companies drove to. Complete transformation of this was product driven, uh, uh, driven architecture, right? So these are all various flavors of DevOps in various forms. Uh, I would say this was each and every component is a product or a component, however you want to put it, um, even more microservices oriented. This is where you're driving uh, independent teams as a single group, right? So they even potentially even report into the same lines. Uh, they have teams, they are, uh, there could be virtual teams, let's say a ops team could be shared across a couple of them, They're driving similar initiatives, synergies across technologies could have been identified and you could club some, some product teams which have similar tech stack and you could have clubbed some um, uh, technologies or products which have similar kinds of customers, right? So all of that sort of drove saying this is faster time to market. Uh, these are self-managed teams because they are able to generate end-to-end -end of a product and cater to all the DevOps checklists, right? So, um, which which basically means you're driving uh, you're driving better stability, uh, self self yield infrastructure could be um, uh, self service products, etc. Right? So that's that's probably an evolution of um, Dev Biz Ops, right? So we are we are including the business into uh, into the DevOps into end journey. This evolved even further, uh, which is platform driven, right? I mean, it's, it's a, it's, it's a jargon use saying I manage the platform. I, my, my company is platform oriented, but what does it really mean? Right? So you have similar products sitting all across, but some components out of it is reverse. I mean, we started off having centralized teams. So there is a central team doing something everybody is consuming. We've gone the whole circle. We have sort of come back to it, but we now don't call it, oh, this is waterfall or this is uh, independent silo teams, but it's sort of similar in terms of thought process, but the refined thought process, right? So when you put a platform, commonalities of all different products are sort of centralized. Uh, it does not mean the team is centralized, right? So that's the big difference here. It's shared setups where products or people from different groups are contributing to a central platform, which is consumed in a standardized manner across the organization. I think um, most of the cloud service providers, be it AWS, GCP, have done this absolutely fantastic, where any consumption of a cloud resource is, is its front end, which you could say it's a platform being provided for its IAS as a service, right? So uh, infrastructure as a service being uh, uh, hidden behind their, um, sort of a platform of sorts for end to end could be DevOps, could be uh, infrastructure as a service, could be database as a service and all of those, right? So, uh, but this platform exceeds that base or the origin it had where it's sort of looking at standardization, you're bringing in components together so that you could create sort of uh, um, a reference architecture which others can consume. It could also have self-service, which is end-to-end -end. developers can do it themselves. I think there is a talk which is coming later where they say, how do developers manage, build and manage things themselves is sort of a platform a platformization of it. Uh, sorry if I completely deviated from that topic. Um, collaborative development. So your, your, your teams are fluid. You're moving around. It's not like you're fixed to one team. I think safe and agile is sort of helping that uh, go through and the developer experience. One bit that has always been ignored uh, in the last 20 years is like, uh, how do we cater to the developer's experience in day-to-day -day things uh, be improved, right? So can can they deliver better? Can Do they have access to all the tools, which is fast? Um, do they have flexibility? Do they, do, do they have to go through n number of approval cycles to get what they want? All that is minimized through a platform approach. So this sort of gets, and when you put a platform because you're standardized, you're bringing in components of business, you're bringing in components of finance, all of that together. So you could sort of say, this is this is a combination of dev, biz, AI, um, uh, FinOps, right? So something like those, right? So, so turning on dev, DevSecOps is a combination, as I said, one is DevOps, which is the core component. DevSecOps, you included security as a part of that component moved on, you brought in business as a part of it, which is dev biz ops. Uh, you brought finance 
uh, from a point of view when you're when the developer is directly working with the infrastructure or cloud service providers you need to give that person a visibility of how that components or how the infrastructure is being used it's not like your own data center where you have bought all the infrastructure and you could use it the way you want um, but on the cloud it's more wisely to be used no ops uh, which was part of saying can you eliminate operations fully by 100 percent automating it ai ops is also something which is sort of looking at it from a point of view can i can i put machine learning algorithms behind to say okay if something fails can it auto heal uh, can it be monitored Obs observability can it be improved and all of those right so and what it really meant is dev anything ops so you're converging two different groups putting everything else in between to say idea to operation or uh, whichever it comes and anything in between is put into the journey of dev, uh, dev X ops, right? So that's sort of the concept, but the point of view here is don't hunt for uh, tools or products to say, this is what, if this comes, I will be better. You will have to figure out as a DevOps engineer, as a QA engineer, you have to hunt for the most interesting things that are evolving across, bring them together. And that's when you would be able to do DevOps in your organization in an efficient manner. That's all I had. Hope, hope you take something out of it. It's a very generic topic, as I said, but it's to sort of open your eyes in terms of saying how convergence would drive the future on anything on DevOps. Thank you. I could probably take questions. Yeah, hi, hello. Uh, uh, my name is Abin, so I'm from Lexmark. So I just wanted to know, uh, like, when you said Dev BizOps, uh, what does that actually mean? Okay. Uh, just to understand that. Sure. And uh, like you, you said about platform-driven DevOps, right? So uh, does that essentially mean like uh, you have uh, different, like, say, uh, pipeline templates say uh, you have got like hundreds of pipeline templates uh, something for churning up data bricks something to do uh, with uh, gradle uh, deployment or something so all this uh, made into a central repository and then different development teams are using them uh, basically referencing them so will that be called uh, platform based devops or is there something added to it which uh, which is missing here that like from... I, I think you did cover most of it uh, from a vision standpoint yes it's not just templatization but also standardization right so for example if there are 100 teams and 100 teams are working in 100 different ways can you find a convergence in terms of saying okay can i create this as five templates and can these five templates be used by by different teams by changing some processes it's every team typically comes back and says oh i am unique right but if you step back if you implement us and when you're home growing some solutions this is a easy divergence from your vision right but when you look at um, when you look at any cloud service provider they have sort of standardized the way everybody works it's an efficient format uh, yes you can customize it but then the core remains the same, right? You can't say I will do um, testing after it's gone to production, I'm just taking a rough example, right? So, uh, so there are some things it's better to be followed from an industry standpoint. So that's one as an answer, but it's also standardization of tools. So for example, somebody is using Jenkins, somebody is using Octopus Deploy, somebody else is using some other component. Fair, uh, can you create a platform where you could create instances of either of these in a standardized format so that Let's say if I have to look at it centrally from a point of view of governance, point of view of compliance, it's easier. Instead of that, if I say there are 100 instances of Octopus Deploy or Argo CD, et cetera, how, do, how would a compliance even work, right? So we don't want to let some of these fall through the cracks. So that's the bit of convergence of tools. And the most important is convergence of processes, right? So which is, it's better to ask every developer to say, or every team to say, this is an ideal way to do. I'm okay if you deviate from it. A platform gives you a standard format. If you deviate, fair. I mean, maybe I have automated scripts which would say 
um, you are deviating, but it's still acceptable, right? So that could be the model, right? So on, on the second one, on the biz dev or dev biz ops is more about including the business vision, right? Which is value to the market, um, including the product owners within the cycle. It's not like, okay, somebody gave, I make make all my requirements and then start developing. It's, it shouldn't be pseudo agile, right? So you would say agile, but then you are like still waiting or changing the business requirements through the process, including them, uh, including them as not an independent entity, but including them in your agile teams. So it could be, could be an evolution of it. One thank more you. question from the front, please. Check. Uh, thank you, Arun. It was a refreshing uh, experience and the journey that uh, we as industry have taken from, you know, wherever we started from, whether Agile or DevOps and now DevXOps, and we were trying trying to find the next X in DevOps. Um, the, the challenge with DevOps transformation is also um, bureaucracy. And in your experience, how have you um, taken care of these um, bureaucratic, bureaucratic processes? Bureaucracy exists in any any change that you bring. I mean, I think it was well covered in the previous topic. Uh, when when somebody is efficiently delivering, they would always say, "Why do you want to change something when we are already excelling?" Right. So that's it. Doesn't come through teams or groups which are struggling and want to make a change. It always comes through teams which are like, "I'm stable. I'm churning out revenue. I'm churning out profits. I don't want to make a change." Right. So I think a simple answer to it is. Uh, is agile ways of working is you show value at every single phase uh, can, you bring in a, can you bring in a team which is uh, which has done devops or again uh, which has improved their processes to drive better value and can you measure that and market it within the organization right so you would say okay this team drove X value, it's not industry values. Uh, industry is probably to sell to your XCOM, but then someone, when you get to the individual teams, that's where the biggest bureaucracy lies. Um, the top management will say, yeah, we'll, we'll become DevOps, and they would go speak in different conferences and say, oh, we are already agile, we are already cloud. But typically, we are not there, right? So the next phase of management is for them to be convinced is about planting the right success stories and sharing it with them so that you could you could take it further. Sure. One question, but one, I think one I'm last question. Off time. We, we take okay. it from the, from the gentleman at the back. Please ask me sure. a question, which I can answer in one line. This was just about the point that you mentioned that you have set processes, and then some persons will ask to deviate on it. I think the major challenge, and I think most of us will agree here, is that once you deviate, there's no writing down that what is the deviation that has happened. Correct. Because we as a are not as disciplined as the aerospace industry or everything like that way. Everything. So what would you suggest might be one way of ensuring that that sort of a thing happens? Yeah. So, uh, I mean, I sort of answered it in the previous one is a little bit of gamification, right? So when you put a standard, uh, you always measure against that standard and start reporting. It may not be shaming, right? Uh, it's like uh, you could start reporting in terms of saying, this team has deviated from this process and if it can be measured right it could be measured in terms of saying you have used a different iim policy or you would say you have implemented a new tool which is not part of the standard set start putting it in a dashboard to say these are set of standards these are the teams deviating and these are the reasons why they have deviated they'll be happy to see it once happy to see it twice but typically they converge back into saying uh, because when you have deviated they have to start justifying and if they show up in that list they have to start justifying why they have used it. And if, if they are able to justify, maybe the central team is wrong, you should adopt that process, right? So they were doing it better than what the central team recommended. So it's a two-way process, either make the deviation a standard or uh, disallow or report the deviations in a frequent basis. Cool, thank, thank you, you so Arun. much. It was and a pleasure to be here. Uh, I don't want to take more time out of the next speaker. All, all over to you. Thank you. Arun, if you could please stay, stay back. And Kumar, we'll be presenting you the token of appreciation from us.